Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Mavericks and YouTubers alike. I have a request to do an interesting video today about what would happen if Japan was nuked and how that would affect the gaming industry. Now, this is an interesting question, and it was posed by Vincent Rodriguez. And I've been thinking on it and wondering what exactly I should talk about with it. Now, once again, my computer, we're still waiting on parts. So, here we are. You are seeing the beautiful actor known as Proto Mario. With that said, how would this affect the gaming industry if Japan was nuked once more, but in our current year? Back in the World War II days, the nuclear bombs that we had were pretty basic at best. They were engineered as fast as possible to be as effective as possible. But for the time, the constraints on technology, it meant that you couldn't really wipe out a country with one bomb. The same goes for today, but they are much more advanced and they can do a lot more damage on a very serious scale. So how would this happen? You might be saying to yourself, whoa, this is pretty ridiculous. What are you talking about, man? Why would anyone nuke Japan of all countries, right? Well, it's not that ridiculous. If you know the situation with North Korea, North Korea is developing nuclear weapons, missiles, hydrogen bombs, all, all of that good stuff in war. Well, it's not so good, but nonetheless, it's, uh, it's happening. And so the question is posed, what would happen if they were to launch a missile and it accidentally blew up Japan? <laughs> This seems more like a cartoon show, doesn't it? With how ridiculous it could be. This seems like a Call of Duty villain scenario more than anything else, but that is a good question. Imagine, if you will, in this scenario, we're just going to say that 99% of Japan was wiped out. All of the cities, most of the outlying islands, it's just gone because a nuclear attack from North Korea went awry. And let's just assume that we're talking about the video game industry at large and we're taking out of context that everyone everyone's gonna rebuild and there's a lot of mourning and stuff like that but we're just basically looking at it from the video game industry well because of all the developers that are located in japan it would completely annihilate the way we see gaming with the influences from japan so what I'm saying is that there are game developers here in America, there are game developers in Europe, and even Australia, and things like that, but Japan has a very specific way that they develop games and put spins on. Legendary RPGs like Chrono Trigger, the aforementioned poster I have hanging up, as well as uh, Earth, Earthbound, they all came from Japan. Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy, all of those games would be gone. and while we do have the internet and technology that we have today and how that can back up and guide people into the future of being able to replicate these things if you lose the original producers often you will not be able to replicate the same results just right so a good example of this is taking citizens of earth as i stated before and you'll notice that it's a very big spiritual successor to Earthbound, but it doesn't look or feel just like Earthbound. I'm not saying it's a bad game, but it's not the same thing. And I understand that it wasn't developed with that mindset. It was developed in the idea that they were making an Earthbound spiritual successor. So to do that would be like if somebody were to look and say, okay, you know what? All of those developers are gone but I'm gonna make Mario. Now, how do you make Mario without Miyamoto's influence? You can look at the game, you can emulate the game, but will you have a really nice original idea just like Miyamoto would have? And the same goes for Zelda, Metroid, as aforementioned the previous RPGs and other game series that are just located in Japan. Again, these game studios do have offices like Nintendo of America, not really in Japan, now is it? But you're trying to replicate a game series that is uniquely produced and developed primarily in Japan. And what that would mean is that while these games wouldn't completely disappear, they would never ever be the same. And that would be really, really unfortunate. That would basically mean the end of Mario and 
uh, Zelda as we know them. They would be replicated, but they wouldn't be the same. And while that's extremely depressing, we can take solace in the fact that that has yet to happen. And because Japan isn't a country that really provokes attacks, maybe they will in the future, maybe North Korea's got a bone to pick with them too, but currently they stay pretty neutral in terms of war. I think my country, America, is on the brink of war almost every other year. So I would have more of a risk than anyone who lives in Japan currently. But hey, you never know, man. I can't really tell you the future. The point is that if every single developmental office was wiped out in Japan, games that were made and series that are continuing on would never be the same. They wouldn't look the same. They wouldn't feel the same. They would be there, and somebody would pick up the license, likely months later, and they would continue it, but it wouldn't be the same game series. So let's hope that that never happens.